with this rise in transgender identification, uh, I'd say mainly among a lot of younger girls, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, I, I've yet to have a client that is male wanting to transition to female. Wow. I have never had that. Hey, everybody, here we are again, and I caught myself another one, and this one's going to be so great. So before we move on, you know, like, subscribe, hit that ringing bell thing and get notified when I'm coming on. But, you know, I just want to thank everybody again for helping me build this platform. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to be able to bring these guests on. Some of them, as you'll see today, have to stay anonymous. But, you know, that being said, I'm still bringing them on because what they have to say is extremely important in a world where we are being silenced, which is bizarre. Ugh. So <laughs> with that and with my coffee, <laughs> we're going to move forward to um, this, <laughs> this afternoon's um, interviews with um, Steph. So Ste okay. Steph, please, um, I would like for you to introduce yourself. Uh, I am a uh, licensed professional counselor, psychotherapist, um, somewhere in the uh, greater United States, um, <laughs> and I've been in uh, private practice for, uh, let's see, 2017, so mm -hmm. going on six years. Um, before that, I worked for two years in a residential treatment center for trauma, addiction, and psychiatric okay. uh, disorders, so dual diagnosis. Um, okay. I did a year internship um, on uh, an Indian reservation in the addiction program, um, okay. and uh, obviously I had my master's because you can't do this job without getting the higher education. Um, and I, my, my current um, area of focus where I really uh, specialize um, is with trauma um, and then working with um, a lot of uh, adults who have um, grown up with a, a parent in addiction. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, adult children of alcoholics, drug yeah. addiction, kind of thing. And then uh, working with people with uh, relationship um, issues in terms of how they relate to themselves, how they relate to other people, how can they learn to relate to themselves in a different way, possibly, so that they can change their relationships with other people with a focus on mindfulness, mindfulness meditation. And by mindfulness, I don't mean just sort of like, hey, pay attention. No, I mean, learning to really pay attention to what is going on in your mind, looking at uh, thoughts, emotions, learning to relate to them, learning to allow for them, learning at times to kind of ride them out until they move on. Uh, so that's, that's my area of focus. And I have, uh, I see all kinds of people. So I have clients who are uh, gay. I have clients who are older. I have clients who are younger. I, I don't work with adolescents anymore. I did for a while, um, but it, it's just not my uh, sort of, um, uh, I don't know. I, I just 18 and above, I'm kind of like, that's good. But I have had some younger right. clients. So, and I'll share some of my experience with that right. with you today. Great. So well, about yeah, the issue is. around transitioning and identifying as transgender. Um, and, and I have to say that uh, it, it really wasn't until I found you online that I started to discover other people um, who are raising similar concerns um, and, and just struggling with some of what's going on in terms of being able to um, speak openly and freely and questioning certain things not uh, not coming from a place of hey i don't believe you but hey let's look at this what what's going on here 
Um, and so it's very difficult to find anything online about um, other therapists or people in general who are having issues with what's going on with this rise in transgender identification, uh, I'd say mainly among a lot of younger girls, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, I, I've yet to have a client that is male wanting to transition to female. Wow. I have never had that. Oh, ever. Strictly f- females wanting to be male has been your yes. experience. And younger. Probably the Excellent. oldest 22. 20 yeah. what? 20, 22. I'm sorry. <gasps> Maybe. And the maybe. youngest? The youngest I started working with when this person was 14. Um, I have worked with adults who are transgender, but I mean, I'm talking about somebody who's at the time was at least 30. Another young man who, and I say man because uh, he had, um, he was working through trauma he was from a very small town in Mississippi. And because he's gay, he was being told he can't be gay. He must be a girl and started to transition to female and then decided this is not what he needs to be doing. He is, he is in fact, he's gay and he was transitioning back, which, which meant, that he was going to have to have uh, reconstructive surgery because he had augmented his breasts and was taking the uh, the hormone therapy, and uh, so it was a whole thing. It was it was very um, very uh, upsetting for this person. Um, yeah. You know, how long so. were they transitioned for before they realized? Uh, it was a good, it was a good stretch. I, I want to say, because I, I, it was a f- back in residential treatment and I don't have the case file with me, obviously, sure. but yeah. I'd say, I want to say what he reported was at least five years and then wow. sort of shifting out of that. Um, but the pressure had been there for many years before starting to transition because he kept being told you are not gay you must be a girl and because he was uh, effeminate that just added more to it it wasn't like he was uh you know kind of like a football player who was like hey i think i'm gay and could yeah. very easily have been sort of pushed into this like no no no, no you must be a girl because yeah. you know if you're not effeminate and sort of kind of slight build and that sort of thing it, it is harder to kind of push someone in that direction, I think, a younger person. Sure. Because they don't yeah. visually sort of, you know, you don't look at that person and go, oh, you're not, you're not really very, uh, you know, uh, manly kind of thing. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's it it very it disturbing. Just, it's disturbing. As a transsexual man here sitting yes. with you. Yes. The, these stories, I don't – Clearly, as you know, as a therapist, these are not rare anymore. They're so common. Not anymore. And that's a really important part of this conversation. When we say not rare anymore, this used to be very rare. And now it's so, I mean, can I ask you? you, So Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I want to ask you like, so as you were obviously agreeing with me, you obviously see an influx of young it's mostly girls. It's girls claiming this trance. It's girls. Yes, it's girls, and and these are these are uh, younger people, um, and okay. So it might help to give some 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 context here uh, in terms of how I've been working with all of this as a therapist. So I I am I do not uh, subscribe to the. Um, gender affirmative, uh, care model. It's also, it's not even something that I, I was, uh, told to use. I've been coming at things from mainly from the perspective of trauma, depression, anxiety, because that's what people have been 
presenting with, and we'll get into more of this sort of a, a kind of side aspect of this. Um, what I've been seeing are younger, young girls, um, I, self identifying as transgender. And when I've asked, so how do you know about being transgender? Where did you learn about this? How do, how do you know what it is? Because this was not something that uh, up until recently was, you know, this is, was sort of not floating out in the ether as uh, this way of, of, of being, of living life. I mean, people have always kind of known like, oh yeah, you know, I know this about this person and, you know, they thought they were a man and now they're a woman, this kind of thing, um, or movies, you know, et cetera. Um, and I got to tell you, it is coming from online community and from friends. I recently had somebody, I said, well, how did you learn about uh, hormone therapy? And this person told me, well, my friend at work told me that maybe I should look into this because that might be what's wrong with me. This is based wow. on a friend said that to another person. Yeah. Say, okay, we had a little lapse there. So we were restructuring, but I'm going to have Steph just kind of recap real quick about what yeah. she's noticing within her therapy practice. Right. Okay. Thank you. So Steph. thank you. Sure. Uh, what I've been noticing is that um, I am uh, getting um, requests from young women <clears throat> excuse me, wanting to transition. And as I said before, I have, I have yet to have a client who is male wanting to transition to female. Uh, I, I'm not, I'm not sure, uh, why, except <laughs> I think, I think there are people out there who are male and want to transition to female. Um, I just am not sure how many really. Um, so I've been, yeah getting a, a request from younger and when i say young i mean aside from the the 14 year old that i worked with for 5 years um and okay. we'll talk about that uh i'm getting requests from young women that are 20 21 to maybe 23 around there and they're um mainly finding out about learning about transgender identity and transitioning from spending time online and from friends who are recommending that they look into this as a, a, a remedy for whatever is going on with them, uh, which is just sort of, um, I, I find it very well, well let me ask you this Go doesn't ahead. that seem like peer pressure I'm sorry well, doesn't that seem thing. like peer pressure well yeah okay so one of my really good friends is a psychiatrist she's a pediatrician and an adolescent uh, child adolescent and adult psychiatrist um, and she's a black mm -hmm. woman and she usually uh, wears her hair in a mohawk. She's like a unicorn. So that's a whole other thing. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we have many discussions about what it's like to be a black woman in medicine and, you know, all of that. At any rate, um, I consult with her just because we're friends and we'll talk about cases. But with this 14-year-old um, that I had, you know, I, I was curious about the friend circle, the friend circle. And we're when I say friend circle, I'm not talking about IRL. I'm talking about online. These kids spend most of their time hanging out online. So, and this is pre pandemic. Um, so even in, even in real life, this young person had some friends but the friends were girls who were saying they were transgender. Now, statistically, this is not realistic. 
I'm not a statistician, but I do know that the prevalence rate of transgender identification, the struggling with the disorder of transgender from a psychiatric perspective and a mental health perspective is very small. So how is it that a young person has upwards of three, if not more, young girls saying they're transgender in their friend group? Then when this person goes to college, in one class alone are two other college students, female, saying they're transgender, they're boys, they're men. Okay, there's that. So I was talking with my psychiatrist friend and I said, you know, I said, this is, um, this, this kid is sort of in this bubble, this, this bubble of other friends, talking about the same thing, suggesting the same thing. And so my friend, the psychiatrist, suggested broadening this kid's peer group to spend time hanging out with kids who are doing different things, into different things, not identifying as transgender, identifying as whatever, if anything, at all. How about just teenager? Okay. <laughs> All right. So we worked, we worked on that and that, that did, that did help. Um, I might be sort of going all over, I kind of, you know, it's all sort of connected in ways with this, with this particular client, this, this adolescent who I did start seeing when I first started private practice, because I was just building my practice and I had worked with some young people and I said, sure, I could, you know, I'll take this, this kid on. I don't generally work with adolescents, but I said, we could give it a little couple times, see how it goes. And then, you know, we just kept, you know, doing the work as they say. Um, I was alarmed at one point as a professional and as a, as a human being, as an adult mm -hmm. that this child was going to a LGBTQ, et cetera. I'm just saying et cetera because there's so many letters, you know, youth center and was being told by an adult at this youth center what to say to get a diagnosis, how to convince a therapist that they in fact needed hormones, that they in fact needed to transition medically, all this kind of stuff. Now, I know, this kid, you, you gotta think about it. Kids, if they wanna keep a secret, they will keep a secret. This kid told me that because this kid was trying to figure out, hey, is this okay what this person is telling me? And I said, absolutely not. I said, I, I don't even, I don't recommend you keep going there. I think we can find you friends at school or some other way that may share some of your thoughts about, you know, identity, this kind of thing. Um, I considered calling this place, uh, you know, I looked up who this therapist was and read over their information. I just didn't know where that would go. And also, and this was, keep in mind, this was five years ago. So I kind of left it alone because I was concerned even then, hey, if I get into this, how is this going to play out, you know, for me? I, I do not, I was starting my private practice. And I do not have the luxury of um, or the benefit of a partner who could say, hey, I got you covered. You don't, you don't have to worry about living expenses, office expenses, blah, 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 blah. That's just one aspect of it. I also have a license. I also spent many years in graduate school and I spent many years postgraduate school training. 
And we'll get into what came before me even getting into graduate school, which is why I'm, I'm very protective yeah. of my ability to provide for myself and my, my profession and my experience as a therapist. So this kid kind of, you know, I talked to the parents and I said, Hey, I said, I think it's a good idea if you just try to, let's get this kid into some other activities, this and that. So yeah, the parents, it was interesting. They, they were very concerned uh, when, when they first brought their, their child to see me. Uh, I s had conversations with them because the, the, the kid was a minor, so that was okay. Everything was signed off on. I would never, you know, talk to a parent and, and sort of betray a child. That's not what we're talking about here. Um, you know, they were just curious, like, well, what's kind of where, where, where are they at with all this? And what do you think? And um, so, you know, I was able to say to them things like, hey, I think we need to broaden the broaden the peer group here because for teenagers adolescents and teenagers we've all been adolescents we've all been teenagers and it's not just opinion it is a phenomenon that that young people the most important group is the peer group more so even than your parents at times that's right yeah um so and that's part of development it, it's it it's part of trying to understand who you are and how you kind of relate to the world and other kids and how can, you know, who, who, how do you sort of form yourself so that you can eventually move away from your parents? I mean, that's the whole idea, yeah. right? So, yep. you know, with this, this young person, the parents were also, I think they, they trusted me in the sense that, Yes, they were, uh, you know, they are, um, you know, typical, liberal, want to support their kid, are, are kind of, you know, behind all the social causes, you know, okay, fine. They said, all right, we're going to call, call her by this name that she chose to identify as a boy, and we'll call him he, etc. cetera. Um, so... For years, I didn't even know what the the given name was, the dead name, as kids say, uh, people say. I know. I know. So, you know, and I was like, all right, uh, this was, I, I didn't know, I wasn't really down the rabbit hole of what's going on with gender affirming model and this and that. I'm like, okay, who is this, who is this young person I'm I'm meeting with and what's going on here? Um, so I explained to them from the very beginning, I said, look, I said, I grew up in a medical family. My father was a surgeon, a general surgeon, uh, from Germany. Um, he, uh, came to the States when he was roughly 26, um, trained and then practiced medicine here. My mother was a registered nurse. That's how they met. I grew up in this house, you know, New England Journal of Medicine was on the kitchen table, JAMA, wow. other kinds of like all the stuff. My dad's study was filled with, you know, medical books, models, body parts. I know what a hemostat is. It's like, me you know, <laughs> medicine samples around the house. I would go on rounds with my dad. And of course, because my dad was a doctor, we had friends who, you know, their parents were some form of, you know, medical professional, whatever, arthritis, ENT, you know, oncology, this or that. Yeah. So I grew up exposed to that world and to the, uh, the thinking and also the practice of surgery is the last resort. It is what you try to do if there is no other way to go about things. It is not something to be taken lightly. It is not something to be done on a whim. Uh, it has consequences. Um, you need to understand what you're getting into. 
um, yeah. you know, physicians yeah. generally live by the, the dictum of do no harm. I think there is harm in wow. giving young, healthy girls, even early age adult girls, double mastectomies because they demand it without really understanding. Wow. Okay. This is permanent. This is, and this is not something where it's just like, well, I can just get breast implants later. That's not necessarily true. And that's a big under. That isn't true. Oh right. my God. What you're saying. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off because it's great. Uh -huh. And I, I'm not going to cut you off, but I just want to say thank you because everything you're saying, people out there need to hear this from an actual medical professional. And I agree with yeah. you. Do no harm. And you're cutting off 16 year old girls breasts because they say no. they're a boy. What? No. What, what if we, anyway, I'm sorry. I'm no. just going to go off on a tangent. Oh, I know. It, but, it, it, but thank it, you. Thank you. I just yeah. appreciate you. I appreciate so, you. So, you know, so sorry for that. No, 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 no. Anytime. The, jump in. Um, so they knew that that was kind of my stance. I said, look, I said, I'm very conservative in that regard. Conservative meaning, um, hey, mm -hmm. let's slow it yeah. down. Yeah. Not conservative, <laughs> you know, capital R Republican. Yeah, no, but how is that even conservative? That, right. How is that even conservative in a medical standing? That I sounds know. to me like safe. That That's I say safe. it all the time. Medical intervention right. should be the last resort. Last it should never be the first right. thing we do. And it's never been that right. way. It's like, oh, my gallbladder hurts. Well, I'm going to just rip that out. No, let's like take some <laughs> tests here and see what's going on. Like, what wow. I think, okay, yeah. thank you. Well, what I think is going on there, and also the kind of the euphemistic way of referring to double mastectomy, I mean, let's call it what it is. It's double mastectomy. It is breast removal. Right. It is not masculinizing, uh, contouring no. surgery. <laughs> I mean, that's like, that to me wow. is, is, is wow. appalling. Um, at any rate, yep. um, there, you know, we are in this culture now where people are exposed to so much in terms of, you know, cosmetic procedures, not that transgender uh, uh, surgical intervention is cosmetic, but just this idea of, hey, if you don't like this, just go get this done to your body. Okay. All right. Hey, you know, but there's become this sort of this, this emphasis, um, almost obsession with, you know, um, passing and that that's the aim of all kind of surgical intervention with transgender uh, people. Right. And, and it, it's like, okay, sure. That makes sense in, in, in a way, but it's, yeah. it, it seems to me, it's sort of veering into this area of, um, you know, it's where you'd see with body dysmorphia and people getting excessive yeah. amounts of, of kind of cosmetic surgery yeah. and, you know, I got to tweak this. I got to tweak that. I got to tweak this. And it's it sort of, it's okay. All that's right. right. That's a whole other aspect to it, but let's stick with the, the young girls. Um, so the parents, they did trust me in this regard, even, even with hormone therapy and the, and the parents to their credit were saying, Hey, let's, let's wait on that a bit. Like, let's just let's slow it down. This kid at 14 was ready. was like, I, when I say ready, I don't mean ready to do this. I mean, ready to go. Like, Hey, I want to do, this is what I, you know, and I, also I'm like, where are you learning about all this? Well, where is this coming from? Friends, internet, this kid's online it, it, all the time. Um, because that is where a lot of kids live these days. Um, so we slowed that down spent a lot of time exploring this whole issue of, you know, what's going on with you. And I got to say th this, this kid, this young person really, really stuck with it. And I think because I say he, and I will say he, but I have wrestled with that at times as well. And I'll explain more about that in a little bit, but, but he did, stick with it. It was challenging at times. And because we had a, a good comfort level with each other, I mean, I would just talk direct to this kid, you know, and when I say I would call him he, but there were times when I would say, quite frankly, I'd say, look, I said, you look like a girl. You, if I saw you out and about, I would say, that's a girl, but you're asking me to call you he and you're asking to be treated as a boy 
but let's let's talk about what's going on here and the the implications of that and how this may in fact not be the best thing for you this kid was going into male restrooms at like rest stops on road trips and i i was like i i am a grown woman i wouldn't feel comfortable doing that not because i think all men are horrible creatures and they're gonna attack you and kill you and rape you and all this kind of stuff <laughs> but that's not safe it, 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 mentally psychologically to be in a situation where it's sort of like yeah you are going to be looked at and it is not going to be comfortable for you and because you are diminutive you are a small person you are obviously developed as a female you have rather large breasts very pronounced hit like very feminine figure i don't know if that's a good idea just because i'm not sure it's safe i mean you can be groped i've had that happen to me as a young girl teenager mm -hmm. at concerts and stuff and it's like I, I don't know why this guy thinks it's okay to just feel me up in a crowd but that happens so i'm just saying let, let let's just be let, let's use some some street smarts here uh so common sense um you know so we would have these sorts of conversations and i was like hey okay I, I i am not my my aim is not to cause you distress or invalidate your uh insistence on being called he treated as a boy but this is why i have some hesitation about uh my role in this and i question myself in terms of being you know complicit in reinforcing a social mm. transition which can that, that that can have consequences as well so you know down the line somebody's like hey i don't want to do this anymore and now i got to kind of reverse it but everybody's been calling me this well but I, I i question have i been reinforcing something that may i don't know shift but because it's being reinforced Oh, no, 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 no. This is this is my identity now. I, I got to stick with this. I've insisted on it. I've been telling everybody this, and I I can't kind of can't back out of this now. I personally think you can. I I personally I don't care if you were to say, hey, I don't want to do this. Call me, yeah. You know, call me uh, Laura. Right. Okay, fine. I I personally right. don't care. I just question my role as a therapist. But okay lesson learned. I, I don't know what I do the next time out because I'm not working with adolescents. So it may not even be a thing. Although I have had these sort of late teen, early twenties clients where I'm, I'm still struggling with the same thing. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> what, what, what are we talking about here? Uh, so, okay. And I'm sure you have, but, but let me just, that. let me just interject. Yeah, I, yeah I, I do. First, I want to say, I, I feel for you, my friend, as a therapist in this day and age of dealing with right. this stuff. I do feel for you. I will be honest. I'm huge on mental health care. It is the number one thing I promote. I don't care what you feel. Get your ass into therapy. Uh, it's yeah. the thing that saved my life. I believe in therapy. I, and I really, really value you, first off, as a therapist. I think you're Thank awesome. You. I can already hear it. Number one. Number Thank two, I, I, I really want to just say that, you know, for you to say that says a lot about you, that you are even thinking, am I part of this? but you yeah. don't have a choice. This is how therapy works. And, you know, I see right. that you're doing one up. You're not saying it in a broad statement. You're, you're mm -hmm. specifically saying about each one of your clients, which also says right. a lot about you, but I really empathize with you today. It actually makes me emotional. Um, oh. I'm totally going to get emotional right now because That's therapy okay. saved my life. And I do, I do believe in therapy on so many levels. Yes. And, you know, to, to, for, for you to say this as a person who, really cares you care about these young people i care about to be kids. put in this position you yeah. care i can uh, i feel it through this machine <laughs> that oh my god i'm crying because yeah. it saddens me that these kids are being put in this space and in a, in a, in a mental health care professional with your caliber your you have a you're awesome Thank is you. being put also in a space to actually feel like am i doing the right thing am i questioning your right. own 
ability to do your job right. because these new ideas of what it means to be trans have so, sort of intercepted and stopped you from being able yes. to do your actual job, which is to yes. actually maybe hopefully get this kid out of the dysphoric feeling. I don't want kids to feel dysphoric as no. none of us do, but maybe no. it's not trans. Maybe it's something else. I and I think, think that's so. what you're really trying to say here. Yeah. What that's I'm trying right. to, so, to, you know, I, I just yeah. wanted to say that. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate that uh, yeah. because um, this has been uh, uh, an aspect of being a therapist that has felt very isolating. Uh, I, I have I have a very close friend who's queer that I, I I'm like I don't even know if I should even mention this kind of stuff because it's so contentious. Um, so you know, yeah. back to this young person. I gotta say he yeah. stuck it out and and you know so i'll just refer to him as he now now that we clear that up that i am kind okay. of yeah sort of i am not sure how i feel about this um and and i'll kind of tell you where that that has gotten me to um but he, he stuck with it we delayed sort of hormone therapy not that i was kind of pushing on it like hey don't do it to, no 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 i just gave this right. kid a lot of room and over time, what started to happen is this kid started to say things like, oh, my gosh, all these people online, they're so you can't say this. You can't say that. It, and, and this kid used to be very much like, oh, my God, no, you can't say that. It's this. And it's like and as an adult, it's like, well, there's more nuance there. But as young people, our thinking tends to be very stark, very black and white. <laughs> I mean, I remember some things I used to think as a kid and I'm like, about my parents, you know, and then you grew up and you're kind of like, well, all right. I, I kind of like, I'm <laughs> totally, I, totally. Right. I see that from a different perspective now. Like, Oh my God. You know? So yep. I, I kind of went with it, but then over time, you know, and I would say things not, not as a, um, not to, uh, put the kid down like, Oh my gosh, can't you think for yourself? But no, I would say things like, wow boy, people online are pretty fierce. It must be hard to just say what you think and not be afraid you're going to be attacked. Be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I just kind of, I don't know what to do. But, and I was like, all right, okay. And eventually this kid started to come to these conclusions on his own and started saying things like, you know, I think I'll just wait on the hormone. I, th I got, maybe I'll do that in college. And I was like, okay, great. Let's go with that. You know, and I was saying like, hey, there's no rush, you know, none of this. I was not saying things like, you know, you know, this is what this can do to your body. You know, this is what can do to you. This is what you, because you, you start coming at somebody in that way, especially a young person, they're going to, they're going to double down and they're going to take the opposite tack. Right. So, you know, eventually, you know, our work kind of came to a close after some, rough a rough few sessions after the Chappelle show don't even get me started you know and and sort of I was like Ridiculous. well first of all as a Dave Chappelle fan I was like okay well, let's get into this I was like, hey, he's a transphobe and he hates transphobe trans people no. I was like you know look no. I'm not even saying it's his best stand-up I was like but let's look at it I like, really was it about what was it about what he was saying that really bothered you and this and that? We kind of talked it through. And it's like, hey, I'm not saying you got to like Dave Chappelle. He's not everybody's cup of tea. Fine. I said, but okay, we at least had a conversation about what was going on, kind of the uproar afterwards, this and that. Uh, so we worked through that. I had a moment where I was like, oh, boy, this kid is never going to come back, talk to me. But stuck with it because, like I said, on some level, this kid trusts me. Like, hey, I'm not, I'm, I'm not in this because I have some agenda, which is don't do this. No, let's just really think this through. What I really think was going on there after years of talking to this young person, this is a young person who, uh, because of uh, uh, a medical condition, had weight gain. Um, and this caused sort of the very feminine looking figure. Um, this is somebody who had no sexual experience. I mean, I'm not even talking like holding hands, making out, you know, before the internet back in the day, that's what kids did. You'd hang out with your friends. You'd hang out with your group of, you know, wh whoever 
it used to be your biggest identity was the band you were into, you know, and now, and, and, and kind of like exploring your, your sexuality, you know, messing around with other kids, you know, all that stuff. It's all out of the picture now. It's all just online. Um, and this is a young person who, uh, you know, everything was being reinforced. The school was like, okay, we'll call you this. We'll call you a boy. College was like, okay, you could be in the dorm with the boys. She has a, uh, he has a good friend who had just slipped. He has a good friend who would say things like, oh, I don't even notice. So like what boobs, what are you talking about? And it's like, Hey, you're not helping this person. The reality is wow. this young person has a very fully developed uh, set of breasts and to say that they don't even exist come on this is this is this is this is disingenuous this is not reality um and so it just was getting more and more uh you know i was kind of i just was questioning all of this and and the parents you know yeah. had expressed moments of of sort of like what happened to my daughter like like until about 14 this kid had never ever mentioned anything about I'm a boy not once okay this is what I'm wow. talking about and this is what is generally happening I think this young person I our work wrapped up in a good place I was like I think you're doing all right you're fine he's at college now I think we'll probably do start hormone therapy and we had talked about that he's like well you can just stop it's just reversible and i was like wait wait, wait, wait. i said you know i said there are things that are going to happen to your body that you can't just uh you know this is not reverse like your car and you put it reverse and now you're back where you started from no uh, <laughs> and, but this this kid it was like oh i want the deep voice and i want this and i was like hey I, we had conversations at times where i would say look i have a deep voice and i'm a woman uh you can you have a yeah. kind of deep voice as it is like what are, what are we talking about here yeah. what uh, else was going on with this young person and we talked a lot about this this kid was very aware that girls and women are not really treated very well in society, wow. the world at large, and I know there are people out there who are going to be like, oh, this whole argument about how it's internalized misogyny. It is. It's a thing. It is. And whether it's full, full on misogyny or not, it is a degree of that. And there is an awareness, if we even just that, an awareness that girls and women are not treated as well. This kid was like, I don't like how girls are treated, and I want to be treated as a boy because people treat yeah. boys better. Yeah. I have more, I have more command, I have more authority, all this kind of stuff. And this kid was a little bit, you know, back in the day, you'd be like, ah, eh, kind of butchy, kind of tomboy, not even tomboy, just sort of butchy, kind of opinionated, sort of like all the things that you think of as pejorative for a girl. Uh, and I was kind of yeah. like, hey, you could be that way. Like, I, it's fine. You know, it's it's like not all women have to have big breasts. Y you can have small boobs. It's OK. Like, hey, what are we what are we talking about here? Like this. Let's look at that. Could you be a little more comfortable with you? We tried it. Hated hated his body straight up. Just it's not about being yeah. transgender. It's I don't like the way this looks. I don't like what's happening because I'm going through puberty. That's different. That's That's different. totally different than, than, that is different. Thank you so much for saying that. Especially that's there's things different. you're saying that so many therapists say to me uh, that I talk to that this kid had no, yeah. no anything about his dysphoria or, what, or no wanting to be a boy no. until like no. 14 or 15. So many therapists are saying no the same exact thing to me the same so thing. and then they're also saying peer pressure they're also saying yeah. online everything yeah. you're saying you're literally saying yeah. so 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 wow 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 i wow. think wow. i i don't know if 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 he will do uh as they say top surgery i prefer to say you know double mastectomy let's be clear about what it is yeah uh let's be clear. i don't yeah. know yeah um yeah. and and if he does that's his choice but i think something else that is sort of going on with that because most people 
do not come from uh, you know a medical background. They don't. They're not exposed to that world. Um, they they are not sort of reading up about uh, medical uh, uh, consequences, things that could happen. Yeah, there's consent, but what are we really talking about if somebody doesn't have a deeper understanding of what what's going on here? And and a lot of people don't. They trust the doctor. <laughs> They trust the physician. That's, well, that's okay? right. Thank you for saying consent. Cons- First off, how can you make an informed choice when you don't have all the information, especially 14? Or, There's no or, way a 14 yeah. year old understands no. that. No, no way. No, 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 no. I, no way. I disagree. Even an 18, even a 20 year old, even an 18 year old. I question that too. Uh, the that, thing that I, I think, I mean, come on, <laughs> taking off your breasts. At, four, no. at 15, taking off your breasts, or even at no. 18. And no. and then uh, you can look at detransitioners who did that. And at 25, yeah. they're like, oh my God, my whole life is ruined. Yeah. So we have evidence well, here's, of that. Here's the thing. It, I think there's this thinking. Uh, I don't know how articulated it is. I don't know how sort of like fully, fully uh, conscious it is if we want to kind of go in that direction. But Collectively, I think there's this idea that, you know, breasts are just sort of these extra things on your body and you can just get rid of them. Just just have them removed, Uh, you know, and that that is just so misinformed. That is that is uh, (laughs) dangerously naive um, because they are say it. It's surgery. It is actual surgery. We're not. not It's an actual surgical. Yeah. They're not it's just not extra just number one, number two. It's surgery. Surgery. Major I mean, surgery. It, it took me forever. I, I had yeah. my mind removed at the age of yeah. 30. So that being yeah. said, it was ho- it was really hardcore Very on my hard. body. Yeah. I, I remember I couldn't even come out of the anesthesia. La, 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 la. The recovery was insane. Like there was right. just a lot of levels there. But I made that choice at 30. 30. And and that's all. I, I will tell you, I do believe that's a different space right. to make that choice. I think if you if you got together a 15 year old, a 20 year old, and a 25 year old, and we're talking to all of them, you would see how that's right much difference there is in maturity and self awareness, um, and that gets that's lost right. in the mix too. Um, I also right. I do want to address something that I think is really important because I I yeah. focus on trauma. And part of that for some people involves times in their lives when they have felt suicidal or may even have attempted suicide. Mm -hmm. And I think something else that is happening that is especially concerning is that this gender affirming care model and many of the therapists out there, I'm not saying it's intrinsic to the model itself. But what I I have read about therapists saying, and this is something I would never say to a parent. I would never say this to a a kid. I would not say this to another person is if you do not do this, your kid is likely to commit suicide. First of all, I don't, I have had a very difficult time coming across any research or data on that. That's one thing. The other thing is that that is so highly coercive that I don't know any parent could make any kind of informed decision about how their child should be taken care of in terms of medicine and surgery, let alone just being in this particular kind of therapy. Um, My experience has been with young people who have been suicidal and attempted, and adults who have been suicidal and attempted, when people attempt suicide, and the attempt is with the intent to kill themselves, this is a very serious thing. These attempts are very serious. They have a particular look and feel to them. This is not somebody who is saying, I'm attempting suicide and I took 10 Tylenol. That's not what somebody who is trying to die does. 
that's what maybe a teenager does. In fact, one of my clients did. And it's like, wait a minute, what are we talking about here? So the people that I've worked with who are truly suicidal have been very close to dying. It's very scary. Uh, It is a tricky thing to navigate in terms of somebody saying, hey, I'm going to kill myself uh, if you don't da-da-da. Hey, how do we work with that? I'm not saying there's an easy answer to that, but I do think that people can also figure out, hey, I know how I can hold you hostage. I can hold you emotionally hostage. It's a kind of emotional terrorism, too, to threaten suicide to another person, a child to a parent, or within a relationship as an adult. Um, And it can keep people in relationships that are very harmful for them. Uh, I'm talking about adults in relationships. I'm afraid to leave this person. Wow. They're uh, they're beating me up. They're physically abusing me, but they say they'll kill themselves if I leave. Okay, I've worked with that too. Hey, this is this is not easy stuff to deal with. the The truth of the matter is, the people who want to commit suicide, the people who want to be dead, are dead. And the rest of them, we got to look at what is going on here. What is going on with you that That's you're right. feeling this way? Another thing that I think is going on is this rash of Young women, girls, saying they're transgender, five, ten years ago, the, the diagnosis du jour was borderline personality disorder. I don't hear that anymore. Now it's their transgender. Nope. Back yeah. then it would be, hey, yeah. I, my, my disorder is that I, I want to kill myself often. I, things are so intense for me, I want to commit suicide. That's a feature of the disorder. But there are ways to work with that. There's a specific therapy for it, dialectical behavior therapy, which in fact would be good for a lot of these young people presenting as transgender. It's like, wait a minute, are you having a hard time with your emotions? Are you extremely anxious? You're feeling suicidal? What's going on here? I don't think it's because it's this transgender thing that you just sort of came up with from your friends or online. I think it could be other things. And we got to look at that and rule out what is going on here. What is really at play? So that that goes into another territory where I have people coming in. They already have their diagnosis. They've already decided. They're like, I am, I'm, I, I am borderline personality disorder. And I've said, well, how do you know that? And they said, well, I was with my, I'm not kidding you. One time someone said, I, I was with my girlfriends. We were hanging out. This is a young woman. And we were just looking up things online, looking up diagnosis. And now I think that's what I am. I said, first of all, I'm going to go down the criteria with you. And I can tell you, (laughs) you, most likely, this is not what's going on. And it wasn't. Um, It's it's a very serious uh, disorder. And and a better name for it really would be emotion dysregulation disorder. And it can be worked Uh through by learning a lot of skills, mindfulness, a lot of ways to work with your emotions and this and that. It's not a death sentence. But people, for a while, they were kind of treating it like that. So it's sort of... Things kind of come in these waves of, of, of online awareness and then people showing up with, hey, this is what's going on with me. What's difficult now as, as a therapist and a professional is even, even with the 20-ish year olds, um, I... I think I am probably not going to work with this population anymore because I am uh, very um, cautious. That that might be a a diplomatic way of saying it. Um, Quite frankly, I'm scared of some of these young people because I want to keep working. I'm a good therapist. I know that because I work hard at it. I've done my work. I've worked with enough people to know. um, And I want to keep being available to people who do need to work through serious stuff, like being sexually abused as a child in a domestic situation where they're being physically assaulted on a regular basis. Somebody who's had a parent in addiction and now their adult relationships are chaotic and nightmarish and painful for them. And they don't want to live like that anymore. Mm -hmm. I have things to offer to the world and I'm not going to let 
that all be taken away from me by somebody who is upset because I don't think J.K. Rowling is transphobic. I mean, this is how ridiculous oh it is. Do you get where I'm going with this? I mean, it's so far. <laughs> People can't even talk do, about, you like, know, does, she, does, she maybe, does she maybe have, have <laughs> okay, even if you don't agree with what she says, or even if it's, you know, outlandish, could we so have what? a conversation? So what? Could we just talk about it? Yeah. Oh, burn him at the stake. Okay, fine. It, this is just crazy. Um, so crazy. I, I've been told, uh, one, one client said to me, well, if I have the thought, whatever the thought is, it, it, if it's not, if it's not a, affirming of somebody who's transgender, then I'm transphobic. I said, hold up. What? You mean you think that if you even have the thought that that means something's wrong with you. You're transphobic. And they said, yes. I, I was like, wow, this wow. has just gotten out of hand. Wow. Used to be, I mean, I went wow. to university. We had postmodernism. We studied queer theory. We studied, sure. I've read Judith Butler's sure. books. I've actually read them. I don't know how many sure. people actually have because yeah. they're a slog. It's like, <laughs> this is all academic theory. She's obsessed with language and it's That's like, right. hey, but we all live in the real world. And you know, some of this stuff, <laughs> Whatever. So, you know, people are like, well, Judith, but you know, and it's like, Hey, I, I don't have anything against Judith, but read her books though. Read the books. That's uh, theory well, though. That's, that's theory. theory. It's not based it's on theory. fact. No. That's what people don't understand. Theory is not fact. It's theory. No. It's theory. Right? <laughs> I, I didn't so, even graduate high school. <laughs> so, you know, but it's you ridiculous. know that it's like, come on. So uh, that's my point. It's like, so now we can't even have a discussion. I mean, when I was in school, it was no. like, well, we'd have a, we'd, we'd have a conversation about it. You don't have to agree with me. That's right. You don't even, you don't even have to like me. That's right. But we should be able to talk about whatever we want to talk about. You know, that, that I think is something that I would hope most people would not want to abandon in the world. But that's not what's happening anymore. Oh, no, they online. don't. No. Uh, and what's curious oh, about no, but, it. But I'm going to tell you right now. Uh -huh. But but you sitting with me having this conversation shows that there is a light shining through now. There is. People are not okay with how we no. got to this space where a therapist no, 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 no. can't even push back. You have to affirm. That's not therapy. No. Now, you know, I'm here for the kids. That's all anybody ever knows to know about me. I don't care what an adult does. I am here for these young kids who right. are being sucked into something they should never be sucked no. into. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. Yeah. It's terrifying. So, so with that, Steph, I want to thank you so much for thank your you. time. And I want to yeah. really just reiterate You're how amazing you are and that yeah. you are saving lives. No matter you choose to move out of the trans space, and I highly <laughs> recommend you do. Yeah. <laughs> but that yeah. being said, you are saving yeah. kids. You are. Thank and I you. really just love you for it. And I thank respect you. you. And I think you're an awesome human. And thank please, you. everybody, you leave some comments. Please leave love. Sure. Please see what Steph did is so important and that we, we are pushing through all this. And the more this information gets out there the more we are going to save these kids from being put in the space they should never be put in never so be. like subscribe ring the bell thing all that stuff <laughs> and you know really i think this is a very powerful interview and i'm really happy yeah. to bring it to You're all welcome. of you so it was stay a right there Steph. <laughs>